Hello, my name is Harold Halfdane and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it would be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the Bent Pyramid. I'm sure every one of you watching this has heard about and have seen pictures of the Great Pyramid of Giza, and perhaps some of you have even visited Egypt in person and have seen them with your own eyes. The Great Pyramid was built by the Pharaoh Khufu in the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom of Egypt. However, during the reign of his father, the Pharaoh Sneferu, a truly unique Egyptian pyramid was built. I remember way back in the mists of time when I was an undergraduate in university and studying archaeology, and when I heard about the Bent Pyramid in my Egyptology class and had one of those that's so cool moments. And here's why. The Bent Pyramid is a critical step that shows the evolution and learning progression of the Egyptian pyramid building model. Let me explain. Pharaoh Sneferu was a fourth dynasty ruler of Egypt from around 2613 to 2589 BC. So basically around 4,600 years ago. When he came to power, Egyptian rulers had been typically buried in what are called mastabas, which are mud brick burial chambers. These mastabas are broad, flat top structures with slightly sloped sides, and the ruler's tomb was buried under this structure. Sneferu didn't want to be built in a regular mastaba like most of the other pharaohs before him. Instead, he wanted to be buried in the biggest, baddest, tallest, and best mastaba of all times. And how did he plan to do it? To stack one mastaba on top of one another to make an ascending staircase of multiple mastaba madness. Now, I've just made it sound like it was Sneferu who came up with this idea, and that isn't exactly true. The pharaoh Zoser in the third dynasty had similar ambitions and built what's now called Zoser's Step Pyramid at Saqqara. And if you look at the pyramid from the side, you can see pretty clearly that it's literally a series of mastabas stacked one on top of the other to make this step pyramid. Sneferu didn't want to just copy what Zoser did. His plan was to create a step pyramid and then cover the sides so that they would be smooth in what we would now recognize as a stereotypical looking straight-sided Egyptian pyramid. It is possible that he was also taking a step pyramid that had already been started for the last pharaoh of the third dynasty by the name of Huni. Either way, this pyramid either started from scratch by Sneferu or reused by him is now called the Meidum Pyramid. In ancient times, this pyramid would have been 144 meters or 472 feet long around each side of its base and 92 meters or 301 feet tall. All that said, he ran into a major snag during the construction. Because the outer layer of the structure's foundation was on sand and not stone, and because the original stacked mastabas that formed the step pyramid were originally designed to be the final layer, they weren't designed to support the weight of an outer layer of stone surrounding them. So as such, the outer layer compromised and collapsed while the structure was still under construction. Well, what was Snefaro to do now that his pyramid had collapsed, but start on a new pyramid? And that takes us to the Bent Pyramid. The Bent Pyramid, whose name in ancient Egypt was called the Southern Shining Pyramid, or Snefaru Shines, was slightly larger than the Meidum Pyramid. Its base was 189 meters, or 621 feet long on each side, and rose to a total height of 105 meters or 344 feet tall and was from its inception designed to be a straight-sided pyramid the first in ancient Egypt. It's called the Bent Pyramid though because well it has a bend in it. The pyramid's original sides sloped upwards at a 54 degree angle and then around the height of around 47 meters or 154 feet, it changed from sloping at 54 degrees to a more gentle slope of 43 degrees. 
From there, it raises another 48 meters, or 189 feet, until it reaches its peak at the 105 meter mark, as I mentioned previously. It seems mid-construction, they realized, if they continued at the more extreme 54 degree slope they originally planned on, this second pyramid Snefaro was building would have collapsed under its own weight like the first, and as such, had to make a structural design change to the pyramid and adjust the slope to 43 degrees. Large timber beams supporting its interior chambers, which I'll get to in more detail later, also potentially point to concerns of the bent pyramid structural instability as a reason why the slope was adjusted mid-construction. All that said, there are those who point to this not being structural instability as the reason behind the slope, but rather point to religious and symbolic meanings as to the rationale. Either way, the facts are that the slope of the pyramid sides were adjusted, and I'll let you be the judge as to perhaps the reason why. But boy, wouldn't it be nice if there was a carving that just said, well, our first one collapsed, so we had to build a second one, and it was starting to collapse, so we made adjustments on the fly to prevent that from happening. But unfortunately, we don't have those carvings. The Bent Pyramid is also unique to all other Egyptian pyramids, not simply because it's bent, but also because it's the only one to still have its original outer polished limestone layer intact. In all other cases, the outer polished limestone layer has been lost. One theory as to why that might be is because of the larger joint clearances used in the bent pyramid. So over the thousands of years since the pyramid's construction, the blocks were able to expand and contract more easily on account of thermal expansion, where in other pyramids with potentially tighter joint tolerances, the limestone rubbed together and fell apart. Now that we've talked about the outside of the bent pyramid, let's discuss the interior and have ourselves a little explore. 12 meters or 39 feet above the ground on the north side of the pyramid is its entrance. Just inside are holes high up on either side of the wall that might have held some sort of pole or bar that allowed ropes to be attached to it to aid in the descent into the pyramid by the workers and craftsmen. A passage descends downward around 78 meters or 257 feet that was about a 26 to 28 degree incline that's typical for the major pyramids in their entry passages. That means if you were looking at a transparent side view of the pyramid, you would see that the passageway descends quite a bit under the ground level. Its floors, walls, and ceiling were all made from cut blocks of limestone. At the bottom of the passage, there was an antechamber an antechamber is essentially a room that leads to another room. This first room is quite narrow, around 1 meters or 3 feet wide, and 5.5 meters or 18 feet long, but 12 and a half meters or 41 feet tall with a corbelled ceiling. Corbelling means the roof slants inward to help support and distribute the weight of the stone above. So it helps the room not collapse on itself. Interestingly, having read an account of an archaeologist who was able to enter the Bent Pyramid before its interior was opened up to the public tours in 2019, he said the interior rooms were filled with bats. And indeed, as I was doing research for this video, many of the pictures from various articles I read from the different archaeologists who have visited the interior showed loads of bats all over the place. In any case, back to the tour. At the far end of the antechamber is an opening up near the ceiling that leads to the next room, which is now accessible only by use of an old 18-foot ladder hanging from ropes tied above the opening. But in ancient times, would have had a narrow flight of steep stairs, and you can see the remains of the pink mortar that was used to help hold up the stairs in place. When, in the 4,600 years since the pyramid was built, or in which 
tomb robbery, the stairs were destroyed, can't be determined. It looks like these stairs, as well as some other areas in interior rooms, were altered as tomb robbers over the millennia dug in and destroyed areas searching for secret rooms. Once you climb up the ladder, you enter the lower chamber. The lower chamber's roof is also corbelled with an upside-down V-shape and is a height of around 17 meters or 57 feet. This room is around 6 meters by 5 meters or 20 feet by 16 feet with walls made of limestone blocks. On the far side of the room is a window and below it a doorway that leads to a chimney whose purpose is unknown. To be clear, this isn't a chimney as in somewhere you would build a fire at the bottom of and then it would stick out the top of the roof. Although I think the visual of a chimney coming out the top of a pyramid is pretty funny. Rather, it's just the shape of a chimney and so that's what archaeologists call it. Right before you get to the chimney, on the other side of the door is a narrow deep pit which may or may not have been original to when the Bent Pyramid was first created. About 12.5 meters or 41 feet above the floor of this room, there's another opening which currently is accessible via scaffolding and provides the door leading to the passage which then winds its way to the upper chamber. It's possible based on the pink mortar on the walls that the stairway from the antechamber might have continued through this lower chamber and then continued up to this doorway high in the ceiling. This ceiling level doorway is slightly below where the ground level would be. And I mention that just so you can get a better perspective on the up and down orientation. It can become quite disoriented in walking around inside the pyramid, which frankly was probably by design. But for modern flashlights or electric lights, finding this doorway up by the ceiling would have been quite a feat. Back when the pyramid was first constructed or newly built, there wasn't any scaffolding in place and tomb robbers or workers only would have had candles or oil lamps to light their way. Without those stairs, or even with the stairs, those forms of light likely wouldn't have been powerful enough to pierce through the darkness to see the doorway located so high above the floor from the room's ground level. If the stairs were left, after construction, that might have been easier, but stumbling around in the innards of a pyramid is no joke. After climbing up the scaffolding, or in ancient times, perhaps a ladder or rope, or the stairs, you enter the passageway that leads and winds its way eventually to the upper chamber. This passageway bends and turns and inclines several times and so some have pointed out it doesn't appear as finished as the other passages. Perhaps it was added hurriedly and wasn't part of the original plan, or perhaps it was added later. Once through this passageway, it connects to another passage called the Horizontal Corridor that runs from east to west. This passage is around 1.5 meters, or 5 feet high, and around... 19 meters or 62 feet long. This horizontal corridor connects the upper chamber to another corridor called the western corridor. In the horizontal corridor there are two portcullises which are large stone doors that were slid vertically into place to control access. Think of this not so much as a door that can be opened and closed but rather a vertical stone slab that was slid down vertical slots in the corridor to block further access into, into that corridor. You can't easily duplicate that in Minecraft, but I wanted to mention it all the same. Interestingly, only one of the two portcullis blocks were lowered. One was still stored in its upper housing above, where the one that was closed led to the upper chamber and was tunneled through by tomb robbers. The upper chamber appears to have been heavily modified at some point between when the pyramid was first built and now. The room was around 8 meters by 5 meters, or 26 feet by 16 feet, and the corbelled ceiling rose to 16 and a half meters, or 54 feet high. 
it seems that at some point after construction was completed, a short wall was added near the entrance, as well as a large rectangular cube of smaller stones called a mastiff, which rose to 4.5 meters or 21 feet in height. Beyond and on the other side of the mastiff, in the other half of the room, was the area I spoke about earlier where the stout timbers were present, helping structurally support the room. This is the room that would have had a sarcophagus if it was present, which would have sat on a raised floor and there would have been a staircase leading from the entrance to a raised floor. It might be that the stout timber posts weren't necessary to support the interior structure because of instability, but rather to provide structure for what would have been originally planned as a raised floor. Let's make our way out of the outer chamber and through the horizontal corridor and then out to the western corridor. The western corridor, which ran for 68 meters or 223 feet, was similar to the one that we used to enter the pyramid at the beginning of the tour. The difference being that this entrance is located on the western side of the pyramid, thus why it's called the western corridor, and it angles upward in a similar manner as the corridor we entered from the northern entrance that we went downward on. This corridor was filled in part with plug stones and appears to have been cleared for about 18 meters or 60 feet at some point before the pyramid was first studied by archaeologists in the 1800s. And then the remaining 14 meters or 45 feet of plug stones were removed by archaeologists. These plug stones would have made it completely inaccessible to pass through. At the end of the western corridor, there was a slab slightly obscuring the entrance. This entrance was 35 meters or 108 feet above the surface of the pyramid side. So I hear you saying, um, half Dan, we entered the pyramid, got the tour, and then exited the pyramid, and you talked a bit about where the sarcophagus would be, but you didn't talk about Pharaoh Sneferos sarcophagus at all. And what I would say to that is you're absolutely right. You see, Pharaoh Snefaru wasn't buried at the Bent Pyramid. After trying to build his first pyramid, having it collapse, and then building the Bent Pyramid, which he adjusted the outer slope on from 54 degrees to a gentler slope of 43 degrees, in the 10th year of his reign, he started construction on a third pyramid. That pyramid took between 10 and 17 years to construct and is now called the Red Pyramid. The Red Pyramid's outer slope was a consistent 43 degrees across the whole of its straight sides, and that is where Pharaoh Snefaru's sarcophagus was placed. I said at the beginning of the video that one of the reasons I was blown away by the Bent Pyramid is that it's a clear step in the evolution of Egyptian pyramid building technology. Here we have the Pharaoh Snefaru building off the innovations that his third dynasty predecessors did by moving from mastabas to step pyramids and then building three pyramids, each getting closer and closer to what he wanted to achieve. His son and successor, the Pharaoh Khufu, then picks up the mantle and creates the Great Pyramid of Giza. I think we've all seen or heard of some of these shows that claim quote-unquote ancient aliens helped build the Egyptian pyramids, but here we have clear evidence that there was a progression of learning at work and that the real lesson is that humans can grow, learn from mistakes, and develop new ways to achieve their goals. And the Bent Pyramid is a clear example of that growth mindset. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, our conversation about history, and our Minecraft recreation of the Bent Pyramid from ancient Egypt. If you liked this video, please take the time to, well, give it a like and a subscribe and leave a comment about what you enjoyed or what I can improve in these videos. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.